on annotations because, well, you can have a ton of DNA or protein data, um, sequencing data, but unless you know what's what, uh, it's not really very helpful. So that's where annotation comes in. So if you haven't seen this before, um, this is the UC Santa Cruz genome browser, and it is showing you this right now. It's on chromosome one, but you're so zoomed out. Like, but if you were to zoom in and in and in, what you'd see was that if you go to this base level you see individual nucleotides, individual DNA letters. You also see, though, a bunch of other stuff. All this other stuff over here, this is all annotations, and it's helping tell you what's what. If you were to just have a long string of DNA letters, but you didn't know where genes were, where was, where was this gene? Where was that gene? What does this do? What does that do? So basically all that important information, that contextual information, that's gonna be provided in annotations. And there are different types of annotations. So some of the annotations are gonna say, okay, where, where are the genes? Um, and so um, the gen code, um, you can will provide like all of the different transcript um, information. So all of basically where gene coding regions are, It'll, you can, do things like see where this gene starts, where that's where this gene stops, where this gene starts, where this gene stops, exon boundaries. So where it is the genes are often um, contain multiple exons, and so then they have these regions that are cut out, that are spliced out, um, and so annotation will help provide that information. You can also have information about where their variants, um, where the people often um, differ. So say I want to, let me look up a uh, various protein. You can search for proteins. Um, so it can then show you, okay, this is um, this various protein. You can see differences. You can see methylation marks. You can see differences in gene expression. All of this information, all of this annotation data. But if you were to go and look, you wouldn't want to see everything all at once. It can be kind of overwhelming. This browser is going to allow you to um, basically choose what you want to show. Do you want to show all of the transcripts? Do you want to show non-coding RNA? Do you want to show, basically there's a ton, a ton of different annotations, different databases and different information that you can overlay on that basic information on that sequence. Um, if you want to actually download the data, um, you can go to their table browser. Here you have the assembly. This is going to be like the basically just the sequence. And so the current assembly for human um, DNA is going to be this GR, this HG338 or um, GR38. Um, and so Basically, this is going, you can get this, download this as a FASTA file. And so the FASTA files are just going to have sequences. And, um, and the sequences, this is going to be like the genome assembly. So basically, the DNA, when it's sequenced, you're going to, you can't sequence the entire, well, first of all, you have DNA is broken up into chromosomes. And so even if you could sequence from one end to a chromosome to another, you would still have multiple chromosomes and you can't do that. Um, so you get, even with longer reads, you still get a bunch of pieces. And then the, then the computer and the scientists, they're all working together um, to piece together the pieces, take the overlapping regions, figure out what's what. Um, and the problem is there's a lot of really repetitive regions that are gonna be hard to map. And so you end up having differences in the genome that like in these different assemblies, so those reads being assembled together, you can see that there have been multiple um, like releases over the years. And so it's important that if you're trying to recreate a paper, if you're trying to do something like that, that researchers have to tell you like which genome assembly that they used, as well as what annotation data that they use. So similar, so the gene boundaries, trying to determine gene boundaries, that's not always clear. Um, trying to say, is this really a product? Does this make a functional product or not? All of this information is constantly being updated as we learn more. And so you can see that for the gen code, so for the basically trying to figure out where different genes are um, and all of this, you have a lot of different versions. And so different papers will say, okay, I used version 24, or I used version 41, et cetera. Um, so if that is one thing that you can do here. Um, you can also then further filter things out if you wanted to 
um, ver filter out by various things like exclude pseudogenes or whatever. Um, there's various different things that you can do if there's really specific data you want. You can also get um, things for, basically there's a lot of different options that you can do. This is for like downloading the actual data. Um, if you want it to filter it in various ways, if you want to get them, basically the, the gen code, that transcript data that most people use, and as well as the human genome release, you can all get this all through like gen code. Um, and so the FASTA file, that's going to be your basic sequences. And then the annotation files are typically coming in these forms like GTF, GFF3, um, potentially a bed file. These are going to have the annotation data. And you can see that you can choose different annotation data depending on what you want. Um, so comprehension, comprehensive, this is going to be um, the, it'll have a lot of different, um, it'll have a lot more than just like the canonical stuff. If you just want the canonical stuff, um, then there's this like basic gen gene annotation. Um, and you can see there's a CHR in this all, so things that are on like reference chromosomes, so these are like the normal stuff, but then there's also stuff that hasn't really been mapped um, to the genome completely or various alternative things. Um, so basically you have this comprehensive gene annotation um, where you have the chromosomes as well as the scaffolds um, and, and things like that. And if you want more information about them, so if you go to the FAQ, you can see some of the differences between various things. Um, so basically it's telling you that the basic transcripts are a subset of all of the representative transcripts, prioritizing full length protein coding transcripts over partial or non-protein coding transcripts. Um, and so th that will be what you get for the basic versus the comprehensive where it'll have a lot more things. Um, as well as then you could choose whether you want it based on like all of those like the scaffolds and all of that stuff or just based on the reference chromosomes. Um, and so those would be the options that you would have and then you could choose different releases. Um, there also if you go to this FTP site there are ones where you can then use like your in a server in a in your terminal you can then get um, download these with like WB and stuff. Um, so that's the basics of how you would download the various annotations and just the fact that this annotation exists. You don't have to actually download it if all you want to do is look. Um, for that, this UCSC genome browser is really, really helpful. And you can see all of this different information that you can then browse and you can check by location and things like that. So really cool stuff and it's all free. Um, so that was the, the like the annotation of the DNA. There's also annotation of proteins. Um, so protein sequences and things. Um, so we've looked before at Uniprot how it'll tell you different information. You can see here, this is an annotation score of five out of five, which means that this is really well annotated, which means that there's a lot of information about the protein, about various parts of the protein, what parts of the protein does what. So as this information is being collected, um, it also shows you like some of these are automatic on annotations, some of these are curated. So people actually went in and put that or verified that. Um, there's all sorts of annotation, go annotation, gene ontology, these like basic terms that are associated with this protein. All of this annotation information is so important because there's just so much information out there. And basically just having the sequence wouldn't be very helpful unless we knew what it was associated with, what parts did what. And scientists are constantly finding out what parts do what and what does what. But if that's not connected to the actual sequence, if it's not connected to the name, if all of this stuff isn't put together somehow, then it's not very helpful to us. And so these databases are super duper helpful. Um, having these various forms of annotation are really helpful for making everything, um, putting all this information together in a central location so that people can take a look. Um, if you're interested more about different format, annotation formats form for the, um, for like gene data, um, there's this YouTube video that I really recommend um, and that I will put in the, put the link in the text.